What size is abnormal endometrial stripe thickness? This is a complicated question for ultrasound, and it depends on menopausal state, menstrual phase if premenopausal, and the presence or absence of vaginal bleeding and hormonal use slash tamoxifen. How do we measure this by ultrasound? The endometrium should be measured in the long axis or sagittal plane, ideally transvaginally. The entirety of the endometrial lining to the endocervical canal should be in view. We measure the thickest echogenic area from one basal endometrial interface across the endometrial canal to the other basal surface. Care should be taken not to include the hypochoic myometrium or intrauterine fluid. This sagittal endovaginal ultrasound shows a female during the late proliferative phase of her menstrual cycle. There are three hyperechoic longitudinal lines separated by the hypochoic endometrium, outlined in yellow, surrounded by the junctional zone, outlined in red, which appears as a subendometrial hypochoic line. The white line represents endometrial thickness. Let's see how the endometrial stripe changes with the menstrual phase. In the menstrual and early proliferative phase, it is thin, brightly echogenic stripe comprising of the basal layer. Minimal fluid can be seen endovaginally within the endometrium in the menstrual phase. In the late proliferative phase, there is a trilaminar appearance. The outer echogenic basal layer, middle hypochoic functional layer, and an inner echogenic stripe at the central interface. Here is a typical trilaminar appearance of the endometrium in the proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle. The uterus is incidentally retroverted, and during this stage, there is no corpus luteum. In the secretory for it phase, in the secretory phase, it is at its thickest and can be up to 16 millimeters sometimes. It becomes uniformly echogenic as the functional layer becomes edematous and isochoic to the basal layer. There's throat transmission and posterior acoustic enhancement sometimes. There should be a regular contour with no evidence of an endometrial mass or distortion. Corpus luteum are present during the secretory menstrual phase. If there's vaginal bleeding, one should keep in mind the mnemonic Palm Cohen, which a lot of us learned during our ob rotation. This is the differential for abnormal uterine bleeding. For structural causes, think of Palm, P for polyp, A for adenomyosis, L for lyomyoma slash fibroid, and M for malignancy and hyperplasia. For Cohen, think of non-structural causes, coagulopathy for C, ovarian dysfunction for O, endometrial issues for E, iatrogenic causes for I, and N is not otherwise specified. For example, C-section scar defect. Again, endometrial thickness depends on pre versus postmenopausal state. While quantitative assessment is important, endometrial morphology and the presence of other risk factors for malignancy should be taken into account. Premenopausal endometrial thickness varies by menstrual phase. It ranges 2 to 4 millimeters during menstruation, 5 to 7 millimeters during the early proliferative phase, day 6 to 14, 11 millimeters for late proliferative slash preovulatory phase, and 7 to 16 millimeters for secretory phase. After a dilatation and curettage, thickness should be less than 5 millimeters. Otherwise, one would have to consider retained products of conception. Again, this is only a guide, and it is variable from individual to individual. OCPs, oral contraceptive pills, may also affect thickness. In terms of postmenopausal endometrial thickness, one needs to first differentiate if there's vaginal bleeding or not, and also if there's tamoxifen or hormonal use. If there's vaginal bleeding, 5 millimeters should be the cutoff for endometrial thickness. If there's no vaginal bleeding, sometimes people use up to 8 millimeters, but this can be controversial. On MRI, endometrial thickness is also well assessed. Measurement should be taken at the mid sagittal slice, similar to ultrasound. The normal endometrium is homogeneously T2 hyperintense, regardless of the menstrual cycle phase. It is outlined by the low signal myometrial junctional zone. Here is a sagittal T2 example. Note the normal zonal anatomy of the uterus in the antiverted position. The endometrium demonstrates signal intensity slightly higher than that of simple fluid and urine in the bladder. This is outlined by yellow. The outer myometrium demonstrates intermediate signal intensity, whereas the junctional zone 
outlined in red, shows relatively low signal intensity. You now know a ton about endometrial stripe thickness on ultrasound. Please subscribe for more awesome anatomy and radiology videos.